Welcome everyone to my next video. In this video I'm going to be going over a fairly simple and inexpensive method of banking and storing a small to medium number of yeast. So this method is good for upwards of about 20 yeasts. Beyond that uh, the maintenance requirements start to get a little excessive uh, although you can definitely go larger than that uh, if you so desire. So this method is based on a method called slanting. This is a really good one uh, for home yeast storage for a number of reasons. First of all, it's incredibly simple. Uh, you need a minimum amount of equipment, a minimum amount of technical expertise, and so therefore you can do this relatively simply. You don't need a lot of equipment. Most of what you need, you probably already have at home. The rest is fairly inexpensive and easy to get off of places like eBay. Likewise, the consumable materials we use are very inexpensive. And as brewers, we likely have most of this at home. Lastly, it's low maintenance. You only need to perform maintenance about once a year. Obviously, that doesn't include the use of the yeast in brewing, but to maintain these cultures is fairly simple. So with that, let's get started. So the equipment you need for making the splants, uh, I have laid out here in front of me, and as you can see, there's actually not much here. The most important thing are these glass tubes. Um, these are 16 millimeter by 150 millimeter glass culture tubes. If you can get them a larger diameter, 20 or 22 millimeters, it might be a little easier to make the slants, but the 16 millimeter ones are fine. The important things are, it has to be a glass tube, it needs to be something you can put in a pressure cooker and will survive the temperatures, and it has to have a screw-on lid. Uh, some of them have just a slip-on lid, that won't work, you need a screw-on lid. The other thing you're going to need is, of course, some sort of media to grow the uh, yeast on. And so this is the media I talk about in my agar plate video. So this is um, 1.005 um, wort made from dry malt extract and 2% agar. And you can see here I haven't heated this yet, so the agar is all um, settled down there at the bottom. A small funnel can be helpful, but it's not necessary. You will need a baking tray or some other uh, similar flat tray uh, for allowing these tubes to harden. Uh, not shown here is you do need a pressure cooker. This is not something you can simply boil to sterilize. We want these things to be super clean so they'll last for months and even years. And the only way to do that at home is with a pressure cooker. Now there's a couple optional things I have uh, here as well. A funnel will make life a little bit easier but you can get away without it. I would recommend at the same time you're making these, you also take some of your tubes and fill them about halfway full of wort at about a 1040 gravity. Uh, these are going to be used for starters, but if you're going through the trouble of pressure cooking your slants, you might as well pressure cook some of these as well. The last thing you're going to need is, again, another one of your glass tubes filled up either with distilled water or alternatively um, with pharmaceutical grade mineral oil. So this would be mineral oil you get at a pharmacy uh, for use either as a lotion or for use uh, as a laxative. So the first thing we're going to want to do is um, dissolve the agar into our media so it's all ready to go. Now we don't need to boil this extensively, we're not trying to sterilize the media or anything like that. We just want to dissolve the agar. So an easy way to do this is to um, stir it up and then just pop it, in, uh, pop it in the microwave for a couple of seconds. Now I don't think you can see this on the camera, but basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to look into the microwave, and the second I see any sign of boiling, I'm going to stop the microwave, bring my measuring cup out, and give it a stir. I'd also recommend doing it every 20 or so seconds, otherwise that agar may settle and give you a solid layer at the bottom. So I don't know how well you can actually see this in the video, but the agar is completely dissolved. So instead of having a bunch of floating particles and kind of a, uh, a murky solution, it's now a, a clear, although slightly hazy solution, and those agar um, particles are completely dissolved. And so that brings us to the next step, which of course is the actual pouring of the tubes. Now it's quite important when you pour these tubes that you only fill them about halfway. One of the most common mistakes people make when they prepare slants is either over or underfilling their tubes. Now a small funnel can help a lot with this, although it's not required. And it takes a few a little bit of practice to get it just right, but you'll find with a little bit of experience that getting it, you know, half full or so isn't too hard. So what you want to do once everything is capped is place it into a pressure cooker that's been filled to roughly the same level as the agar level in the tubes. 
You want that water to have been preheated so it's almost boiling, and you're going to take this rack, you're going to put the whole rack in there, seal up your pressure cooker, uh, make sure it's on its maximum pressure setting, and once that pressure spell um, starts to whistle, set a 15 minute timer. At the end of that 15 minute timer, kill the heat, let it cool down to below boiling, and then remove your tubes. And that part is absolutely essential. That's what's going to sterilize our tubes. So you need 15 minutes at full pressure. While your tubes are sterilizing the pressure cooker, you're going to want to get your casting station set up. And that's what I've done here. So you can see here, taking a flat cookie sheet, and I've elevated one side, this side here, just very, very slightly. In this case, I've actually used a little wine topper. Another very common mistake that people make is they don't angle this tray low enough. You want the tray almost flat. Ideally, when a tube has been cast, there should be minimal media on the base of the tube, and then the slant should go all the way up to the very, very top of the tube. You're trying to maximize the area of the slant to maximize your growth surface. You also want to make sure you haven't underfilled the tubes, because you also need enough media to ensure there's ample food for the yeast to grow, as well as ample volume to absorb any toxic metabolites. The next step here is pretty easy. You want to take your tubes, tighten those lids all the way down, and you want to place them on the rack, cap side facing uphill. You're just going to do that for all your tubes. And then you're going to leave them there until they harden. Now obviously you're only doing this for your agar tubes. If you did tubes of mineral oil or of wort, uh, those you'll just want to tighten the caps on and leave them in your tube rack. A common problem many people encounter is condensation forming in the tube. This is quite problematic because this will be very hard to get out and it's going to prevent proper streaking of yeast within the tube. An easy way to get around this is to invert the tubes once they cool to the point where the gel is solid but where the material remains warm. In doing so, your condensation will still form but it will collect in the cap rather than against the gel and now you can easily remove the cap, of course working near a flame and shaking that condensation out of the cap. Once removed, you can put the cap back on, reseal your tube, and store it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. All right, so our tubes have cooled, uh, the, the uh, slants have set, and I'm just gonna show you uh, sort of a close up here of one that's done fairly well. So here you can see down at the base, we've maybe overfilled a little bit, you can see there's a little bit of um, an area here where it's not slanted, but you can see along the length it slants nicely up towards the cap and the slant runs the whole length of the tube. So this is what we're shooting for, something like that. Here's that one that I underfilled and I don't know how well you can see this but hopefully you can see that the slant um, doesn't fill the end of the tube, it only comes up midway and the gel doesn't even make it to the end of the tube. So that would be too small, we wouldn't want to use that one. So the next step obviously is we want to put some yeast uh, onto the slant and let it grow. And the way we do this is pretty straightforward. You are going to need a couple of things for this. You will need a bacteriological loop uh, like this one here. You're going to need an alcohol lamp or a Bunsen burner. I have a uh, past video showing you how to make an alcohol lamp. Of course, Bunsen burners you can buy from commercial providers. Uh, you're going to need a uh, source of yeast. In this case here, I have some um, WLP001, good old California ale, and of course our slants. It's very important when you're doing this that you follow the best of aseptic techniques. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, I have a previous video on that as well. I would recommend watching those and practicing them uh, before you really make an effort at, at banking your yeast. So the procedures we're going to use are pretty simple and straightforward. We want to light our lamp. And we're now going to inoculate a tube. And the goal when we inoculate a tube is we want to inoculate the whole surface from the bottom right to the top. Uh, this is a, a large growth surface. It ensures we have a good store of yeast. Uh, for future use. So the way we want to do this is of course following the best of aseptic techniques uh, which means we're always working very very close to the flame. Uh, we want to flame any tools, the openings of any containers, things like that to ensure that things stay clean. So the first thing obviously is going to be the yeast. So we'll, um, I've already flamed this loop so I'm just going to give it one last little flame just to make sure everything's good. We'll touch it to the side of the tube to cool it and then I'm going to grab a loop full of the yeast solution. Now I'm going to take one of my slant tubes, off goes the lid, keep that near the flame, flame the opening. We're then going to insert our loop all the way in and then we're going to streak from the bottom 
up towards the top. And that should now give us a um, strip of yeast going pretty much from the bottom of the tube to the top. We now return that to our rack. We're ready to do the next tube. We'll now let this go for uh, 24 to 48 hours at room temperature, so long enough for the, the yeast to grow up, at which point we should have um, yeast ready for long-term storage. So once our growth is complete, the next step is we want to store these in a way that they'll be stable for a long period of time. And there's a couple of things we can do. So the easiest thing is to take um, vinyl tape or plain old electrical tape and to just seal the top of our tube as is with tape. Once it's sealed, you put this in the fridge and this will actually store for most yeast strains somewhere around three months um, without risking losing your, le your yeast. So you can see there, we've got a nice tight tape seal. Um, so in the fridge, that's stable typically for about three months uh, without having to worry about losing your stock of yeast. But we can actually store things a lot longer with this, uh, form, uh, this particular system. So you might recall earlier in the video as we were um, pressure cooking our yeast slants, we also pressure cooked some water and some mineral oil. And the purpose behind that was to actually come up with a longer term store solution. So for this, I am going to recommend you use uh, a flame like an alcohol lamp or a Bunsen burner um, because we're going to have to open our tubes um, to make this work. And so the way that we go about doing this, it's fairly simple. Here I have my tube of water that I, I sterilized uh, in the pressure cooker. And here's just another tube of yeast. And what we want to do with the water is simply use it to fill up uh, the airspace in our tube of yeast. So we're just going to flame the lips of both tubes and we're just going to pour water in uh, right until it's pretty much full to the brim. So there you can see that tube is um, full. I hope you can see with water. Uh, you probably can't really see the colonies anymore with the camera but they are still there on the tube. And again we're going to tape the lid of this tube shut and put it in the fridge. Like uh, Stored like this Cultures are good for, in most cases, a year. Um, I've had a few strains that lasted not quite a year like this, um, but most strains of yeast stored in this fashion are good for a year. But what if we really want to store these for a long time? Well, that's where the mineral, mineral oil comes into play. And the idea here is exactly the same as with the water. What we're going to do is use this to fill in, uh, again, the airspace inside of this slant um, but this time, of course, with mineral oil. So, again, we're going to pull the caps from these tubes. We'll flame both tubes and we'll fill with mineral oil. Now, mineral oil will cause these um, slants to last a lot longer. Um, I've uh, used slants like this that were up to three years old without any issue. I've never pushed it longer than that, but there's no reason to believe it wouldn't. There are actually reports in the scientific literature of um, slants stored like this uh, lasting more than 30 years. Personally, I wouldn't want to trust these with a precious strain of yeast for more than two years. But in the fridge, under mineral oil, again with the top tape shut, although I'm not going to tape this one shut, um, we should be able to get a good uh, two years before we need to reculture uh, this tube of yeast. So the last thing I want to mention in this video is how you actually go about using these yeast um, for making starters. And so you may also remember uh, in our uh, the beginning of this video when we were making the slants, we also sterilized some little tubes of wort. And so here's one of these little tubes of wort. There's maybe 10 mils of, of media in there. Uh, this is just 1.040 or, or, uh, wort, although you could use uh, another media if you so desire. And what we're going to do here is using again our loop is we're going to transfer yeast and I'm going to take it out of the mineral oil container and put it into um, our container of uh, wort. So again, flame the lip, heat the loop. Now with the mineral oil and water, you can just cool the loop right in that solution. For the dry tube, you would want to cool the loop um, elsewhere before inserting it. So I don't know how well this shows up in the video, but what I'm going to try and do is just scrape up some of the yeast off of this slant. And I'm just trying to get a little bit off. And I don't know if you can really see that again on the loop. I'll bring this in close, maybe you can see it. 
but there's a little bit of yeast, white yeast, as well as some mineral oil stuck to that loop. Obviously, you normally wouldn't do that. You'd go straight into your tube of wort, which is stuck. There we go. Um, so again, flame loop of that. Don't flame your loop. And we now just shake that yeast off of the loop into the tube. And then for culturing, what we want to do is put the, t the lid on um, tightly at first. Give it a real good shake. This will oxygenate. And then we just want to crack that loose so that any gas produced by fermentation can escape the tube. Once or twice a day when you walk by the tube, tighten the cap, give it a shake to reoxygenate, loosen it off, and in somewhere between two and four days, you should have enough yeast in here that you can now pitch this into a half liter to a one liter size starter uh, and begin growing up your yeast into useful amounts. So the last thing to talk about is what to do when these tubes start to get old and it's time to now um, do something to keep that yeast going. And remember, if you've sealed it with uh, tape, uh, but nothing else, it's probably about a three month window you're looking at. If you've uh, filled with water and then sealed with tape, you're looking at about a one year window before you need to do this. And if you've um, filled with mineral oil and then sealed with tape, you're looking at two to three years uh, before you have to do this. But at some point we need to do something to make sure that our old yeast stocks um, don't die on us. And what we do is simply transfer it to a new tube. And so the way that works is pretty simple. Again, you're going to need a lamp. You're going to need a loop. Obviously your old stock of yeast, as well as a, a fresh tube of um, a fresh slant. And so the process here is pretty simple. We will remove the tape from our tube. In this case I'm just using the one that I, I uh, left filled with air. And we're going to open that, keeping that near the flame. We're also going to sanitize our loop, which has a bit of mineral oil on it. That's why that happened. And we'll cool that first in the air and then on the top of the tube, so not on the agar, but on the glass. Once that's cool, we're just going to grab a bunch of yeast. I don't know if you can see that there, but I've, I've scraped up a bunch of colonies here. Let me see if I can give you a better shot of that without burning myself. Um, so here, um, I'm scraping colonies up off of the gel. And so again, on the end of the loop there, maybe you can see that there's a little bit of white that will be our yeast. And we're just going to take this yeast and onto our fresh slant. We're just going to streak this out just like we did when we were doing this fresh. So all the way down to the bottom and we'll streak our way up. And then again, we did it just exactly like we did last time. Loosely cap that tube so that, air, uh, so that uh, fermentation products like carbon dioxide can get out. Keep that someplace warm for a few days. And once that time has passed, you want to seal it up add the water, the mineral oil, whatever it is you are to, to keep this tube going, and then put it back in your fridge. So that's my uh, video on quick and simple yeast ranching for at home. As you can see, it's a pretty easy way to keep yeast, but if you had more than, say, uh, 20 strains, this could be a little laborious, and hopefully one day I'll get around to showing you a video on a, on a freezer-based system um, where the yeast very rarely, if ever, need to be recultured. Uh, so with that, this video is done, and thank you very much for watching.